Pro what, Pro what have we got there, baby? What, what's it called? <laughs> baby. Baby, right. When's it, it when's it due? Tomorrow. Tomorrow, right. Sometime tomorrow, maybe. We've got a very busy day today. We're doing loads of lawnmowers, me and Gary, so we'll, we'll show you that in a minute. We're going to show you what we've done so far. Hold on, yep. Sharon's been doing a bit of transplanting. Let's have a look. As you can see, we got a couple of the cloches done. I've run out of cake. <laughs> eh? Mm. And it's everywhere there. We've run out of uh, cable ties. Let's just have a look here, look. I've just cable tied the wire over the cloches like that. Those are the cabbages, the original ones. They're now starting to come on. These, I don't know what's gone wrong here. These are the uh, cauliflowers. They've all, they've all withered up and died. Look, I don't know why, I ain't got a clue. Maybe, I, perhaps they was too small to come out, I don't know. That one might survive, I'm not too sure yet. Sharon's transplanted some carrots and beetroots. Yeah, All right, transferred then. And they've actually taken quite nicely, so I'm quite happy with that. There's the lovely cloches. And let's go in here, look. Let's have a look. Since the last time you've been in here, look. Look, all coming up, love. Look, look at the lettuces now. Look, them potatoes are going absolutely loopy now, as you can see. Now, someone did say that the broccoli might turn to seed. Is that right? Turn to seed, Chan? Was it, it turn to seed? But I haven't thinned it out. It looks like the strongest is coming up, so I'm hoping that that's not going to be the case. Um, there's, there's a remainder of the carrots here. Sharon's going to just remove some of these round the edge. Um, if we know what we know now, obviously we wouldn't have done it this way, but we didn't know, so so that's the broccoli. She's going to thin out a few more of the beetroot. Uh, I think we're going to leave the onions, I'm not too sure. They might be a bit too close together, some of them, so whether or not we should or shouldn't f uh, f uh, thin them out, I'm not too sure. Look, now, you, as you know, we've got, to, we've got to redo these, as you know, but look what's happened at the end there, look. A broad bean has actually survived and come up, so I'm going to leave leave that little one in there and as you can see we're gonna to have to redo all them as you know I don't think anything's happening with a gooseberry plant that looks like a potato plant there Sharon doesn't it mm. looks like a little potato from the old compost which I've used that gooseberry plant we're gonna to have to pull out and we're gonna put something else in there, put no. your chillies in there you're gonna put your chillies in there okay as you know the raspberry uh, plant took off so we're happy with that um, let's have a look anything else we need to know about yeah apparently I should have only had about two per grow bag here and also I've probably over watered them so that's why they're dying off these are the squashes and the pumpkins as you can see they're starting to develop other leaves now as you can see right there so I'm happy with that I'm not going to try and over water these now so um, that's you, le you live and learn so I'm, I'm happy we, we actually learn this stuff by making mistakes as well again we try to do loads don't forget we've done everything at once here so it's very hard to research every different single plant in every different single uh, scenario which we got. So we're actually learning because we had to get loads of different things in the ground here. So that's what we're actually doing. It's a learning curve. Plus we've got other work to do as well outside as you know. So what do you reckon ladies? Oh it's great. It's great? We're not letting Barney in as you know. He started to scratch the doors up. It's up the trees down while they've taken off. Why, yeah, so Sharon transplanted. Well, we well, tried them up, and it said before, don't. Something's eaten that one. Hey? There's something in there. They've been eating them too. Have they? No, oh, they haven't, they maybe. But there's a slug in there. Where? I don't know, but I bet there is <laughs> eating it. Where? Where? That wasn't like that yesterday. Where? Well, I don't know, Sharon, because I've got the cloche on it now, so. Um... A slug will climb under. Yeah, but we've got to look for snail trails going up the side. Slug. That's what. Yeah, they leave snail trails. I think they leave slug trails. It's the same thing, Tracy. <laughs> I bet somewhere in there is a slug. Well, we're going to have to sort that out if that is the case. I can't see any uh, snail trails along the edges, so I'm quite happy with that. Eh? Hey? Oh, lied. Mummy, yes. So that's that, anyway. So I've got uh, another lawnmower. We sold quite a few lawnmowers. I've still got the Murray one to do. I'm still struggling to get that pulley off the end, but as you can see, I've got loads of blinking engines here, which are no good. I've got three engines under there, which are no good. 
Uh, that one there, which is no good. I've stripped this lawnmower down. This is going to be the first one I'm working on. Um, I'm actually going to respray this one. It's a nice solid deck, but all the paint's flaked off it, as you can see. I'm going to give it a paint underneath as well. I don't normally do this, but um, for some reason, I just want to. As you can see, it's a bit of a state, this one. So that's the next one I'm working on. That's the engine out of that. So I'm going to be uh, working on this one, as you know. So here we are in the log cabin. And I've still got these two engines in here. I've had these here for over a year now. They are Briggs and Stratton engines. Not too sure what they are. So I might transpose them into... Um, these two green ones, I've got that green one there and also over here I've got this other green one which is just a weight in a deck and a paint for the uh, grass box, they're actually okay, I'm not going to do any work with them Gary's brought another lawnmower this one here, he paid £20 for we brought it home and basically put some fresh petrol in it and it started first time, so that just was a service no repaint needed there, just to tidy up he picked this one up yesterday and this one again is a sovereign and the bloke said he got it out of uh, his, his shed this year to start cutting the grass he put fresh petrol in it he tried to start it it wouldn't start and as a result of that he advertised it spares or repairs it's got a few bits of paint flicking around the edge of it good solid deck but i think gary's just going to tidy this up by just repainting the lower lower part of that rubbing the flaky paint off and doing that we put a new spark plug in and it started up first time so there you go just little things to do maybe just like shorten that bolt off there or maybe change the bolt there have two bolts like that for example just to tidy it up and a general clean up and that one's going to be ready to go so at the end of the day he wants that one done he wants that one done i want this one done and sprayed with this engine in and ready to go whether that well whether or not that'll be ready to go depends if the paint's dry but i want that Basically, I want that deck ready. We've got a mask around these labels. I'm going to retain these labels, as you know, I always do. Just cut round, put some masking tape over them after we've cleaned it. And just cut round the labels. Uh, I might lose this one here, but keep that back one there. So, you know, it just keeps the thing looking original. And once you've actually lacquered over everything, uh, everything looks nice anyway. So, that's what we're going to do with that one. This is another one which he's uh, actually finished now. He serviced this one. This come back. He sold this one last year to a chap and he brought it back for a service because it won't start. It didn't start. So that one's ready to go. So yeah, basically we're we're getting through the lawnmower, but we're also bringing more in. So Gary's here. Hi, love. You my off, baby? Are, uh, my children. See you later. Bye. You going shopping? Going shopping. I love shopping. Okay then. Right, here's what we just sold on eBay. And the bloke's going to come and pick it up, but we thought we'd just try and uh, start it up and give it a check. And it wouldn't start because we've left it out in the open, so we had a bit of water in the car. We had to strip the car down, give it a clean out and that. And So let's just, is it back on, Gary, that's on it. That's on the other So let's just try to start it now, look, holding it. Yeah, so from cold you need the full choke and then once it's so there you go we just got this car running we took the car off we put it through the ultrasonic cleaner just to clean the jets out again and uh, that was it so yeah that's why I'm ready Right, so yeah, it looks like we've got a lot of paint that's off here, as he says. But before we do, these are another two which Gary's got. As I said, we're gonna, he's going to try and get these done today. They're all complete. They do run. They just want a good service. And uh, as I said, he might strip that down just to get the uh, deck done. Just like I've done with this one now, as you can see, it's um, all labelled up. All the labels I'm keeping on there have been uh, taped up. We've just gone around it just to cover in some of the edges with the filler. And it's just a matter of then of priming and then giving it the top coat so we'll have this one done uh, that one over there and that one over there i won't bother with the green one at the moment which is there and there i'll just concentrate on doing this one so you're dropping the engine out or what yeah the engine's coming out wheels are coming off back flakes are coming off handles are coming off that's all we've got to do get down to the bare deck you'll take these labels up probably it'll be a slight rub down on these gritted areas and just around the edge there 
little bit of filler, slight rub down with some paper or a uh, uh, or Scotch Bright pad, and then we'll prime it and then we'll spray it red and then we'll lacquer it. But as I say, we'll be doing three together probably, so that's what we're up to at the moment. Anyway, we're going to carry on, so we'll see you in a minute. So let's take a look at what he's been doing and what he's got now. So, right, you've got a Briggs and Stratton engineer and you're just basically giving us a service, yeah? You've done the carb by the looks of it. Done the carb, done the air filter. Air filter's clean and changing the plug. Plug out, exhaust off, clean the engine. Right, and that'll have new oil in it as well, won't it? Yeah, I'll just drain the oil. Right, that's it, so that's fine. So that's that's looking good. Right, so I think it's about time for a cup of tea as I say, I've just come back. So I'm going to get the kettle on now and we'll get a cup of tea and a cup of coffee and we'll speak to you again shortly. Right, okay, we're going to spray these now. I've got the lacquer. It's a 2K lacquer and we're going to be applying it with my Devilbis spot gun, spot repair gun with a 1mm tip in it at 2 bar to 28 pounds. So that's what we're going to do now. All right, be five minutes. <laughs> Just run out, I just had to mix up some more. Okay, that's that done. This stuff doesn't take too long to go off anyway, so let's just show you around it quickly. There we go, we've got a nice gloss on them now. They're a lot better than what they was. Again, they're not perfect, they're not supposed to be perfect. We've just prolonged their lives for a few more years. 
And don't forget, these have been undercoated as well as having the base coat on uh, and with an industrial top coat. When they first come out of the factory, all they have is one quick blow over, no primer, no nothing. So they're in a lot better condition now than what they would be as when they come out of the factory. So yeah, there we go. Well, we're going to go in now and have some dinner. Because I've had to have a busy day today and I've been out and about, I mean, obviously I've not done as much as what I wanted to, so we're going to carry on tomorrow anyway. By that time, these should be assembled, back together, and out on, on sale. So that's what we're going to do anyway. So, Right, I've just come back outside now. The time now is 20 past 7 in the evening. And that's my mower uh, that we sprayed. And it's been about a, an hour since we've, uh, since I last showed you a spraying it. And let's just have a look and see what Gary's done. Well, as you can see, it's all back together, this one, fully serviced. And let's just take you around it, and let's just see what we actually do to these mowers. I'm sure you'll appreciate that this is in absolutely lovely condition now. The paint is fully protected, and it looks absolutely fantastic. When you think that it was actually looking something like this one here not so long ago in fact it was actually worse in this one because it had all the paint flaking up off of the bottom here for example where my foot is so looking at that it's the sort of thing if you just take a little bit of time and lucky enough we had three of these to do so we're doing them in, in sort of bulk I won't I won't be finishing my one tonight but uh, as I say Gary's got that one ready while I've been out all afternoon He's just been uh, plodding along here, on his own, outside, and he's just going to do this other one. He reckons he'll take probably about half an hour to put this back together. How long did it take to do the other one, put it back together? Half hour. So it took him about half hour to put that one together. But this, this lacquer, as you can see, it's gone off, and because we use an actual fast hardener with it. So it is car quality, and I'm sure you'll see that the finish of it is actually it's probably a lot better actually than what you get from when these things are actually manufactured because when we put the uh, air, air hose to them and uh, blow off all the loose paint there is no undercoat, there is no uh, primer, oxide primer all you're getting is a thin coat of red uh, single, single coat of colourant and that's probably about it this we really do put a nice heavy coat of um, lacquer on and they actually look fantastic so that one there he's got ready uh, which he's going to be working on in a minute and that's the engine off it, that was just sitting on there. So he's already serviced and primed that engine. He's put it on one of my old decks, just rested it on there at the moment. But that's the engine, ready to go onto here. So we'll let him have his tea, and I'm going to go back inside. And we'll see uh, what he does. Well, well, we'll see us side by side, hopefully, with these two lawnmowers. But as you can see, she's a beauty, look. Absolutely fantastic, all the way around, even down, even down to spraying the handles, look, as you can see. If you just give them a uh, black satin black or whatever, we got gloss and satin black, but whatever comes to hand. He's cleaned up the box as well, the wheels he's cleaned up as well, and that, I would willingly pay £100 for that mower. Yep. And how much did it cost you? Uh, 21 quid that one. 21 quid, so you can't grumble at that. We do this little bit of extra work, and as I said before, I keep saying it. If you treat this as a hobby, you ain't putting no pressure on yourself. Give yourself to do it on a Sunday, or in, now you've got these light nights in the evening. So, find an old lawnmower. There must be a neighbour there. Put, put, just have a chat with your neighbour. You got any old lawnmowers, or do you know someone with an old lawnmower? And just have a practice. It's not the hardest thing in the world. My one's not going to be finished tonight, as you can see. I'm not too worried. I didn't actually think that it would be dry to be honest with you. As you can see, all we've done, although the label's a bit faded and a bit marked, all we've basically done was mask round them. I'll just put masking tape around them. And this time, rather than leave the labels on top, I actually lacquered over the labels as well. The simple reason being is because just underneath there on that one, I didn't want to pull the label off, but there was a little bit of a uh, loose paint due to a little rust bubble under there and I didn't want to really disturb that so I left it and now it's all lacquered in and sealed in so there you go happy days and as if by magic 33 minutes later this one has now been completed that was the one that you just saw up on the uh, on the deck there as you can see two lovely looking lawnmowers now it doesn't take long. Once you get the hang of it, and once you've 
stuck with a certain model. As I say, the problems we had with this one early on is that we don't carry spares for this, so we had a little problem with the jets on this one, but that's over with now, we've got sorted. But these we keep spares for, and as you can see now, you've got two lovely mowers there, both in absolutely pristine condition, and anybody would be glad to get one of these. I've just got to get my finger out and get my one done. But I'll be finishing that tomorrow. Anyway, I know there's a few of you who do repair lawn mowers, and if anyone's thinking of doing it, just take a look at what we've done. It's pretty straightforward, really. Give it a go, you might enjoy it. Or if not, you might want to specialise in something else mechanical. Could be strimmers. I don't want to mess about with strimmers. We don't want to carry loads and loads of spare parts. We specialise in these, and that's what we deal with. Especially Gary. They're beauties. See you in the next video. Bye for now. Don't forget Bert to clear up like yourself. <laughs> and as you can see now the time is 7.58 in the evening. The sun's now gone down. All is good with the world. See you later.